Hello and welcome to this edition of Intelligent Video Today. I'm your host, Steve Onderhaar. Joining us on today's episode, Dave Jays, Senior Vice President of Product over at VBrick. Welcome, Dave. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to chat with you. Now, VBrick is one of the uh, established providers of enterprise streaming solutions, uh, uh, developing a platform that helps uh, facilitate uh, the creation of one-to-many content in, in the enterprise. And uh, we've seen some significant uh, evolutions uh, for VBrick uh, here in the intelligent video age. And uh, in this past month, you've made uh, some very interesting AI-related announcements. But uh, this is not your first trip around the AI block, is it? Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how VBrick has been leveraging AI uh, before AI was a big thing. Absolutely, Steve. And to your point, we've had capabilities like transcription, translation, user tagging to extract information from video um, and to really make it more discoverable and be able to apply that uh, that knowledge to business processes at work. Um, we feel it's super essential for AI to be tailored to a use case and tightly integrated to the platform. And what we have going on in 2023 and even more in 2024 is that these capabilities are being supercharged by generative AI. How do we take that information, turn it into structured data um, and really extract the value of that video content. Um, and, you know, even more exciting with multimodal com models coming out. Um, it's just a really exciting time to be in the technology industry. Yeah, and as we look ahead uh, to 2024 with your recent product announcements, you're really moving beyond the world of just transcribing the content to really extracting knowledge uh, from, from the different videos that are processed on the VBrick platform. Tell us a little bit about uh, content summarization and some of the other aspects uh, that you're trying to make possible with this new product launch. Absolutely, Steve. So we have two big generative AI features that we've recent, recently launched, one summarization and the other one being our video assistant. And so both of these are using generative AI to help you understand your, your, your video content, um, to be able to find what, you, what employees need to be able to do their jobs more effectively and really get back to work. Um, and so with summarization, you know, what you can do is reduce the time spent manually tagging videos and obviously time is money. Simultaneously, we can make it easier for, for anyone to find the content that they need um, and to find the right moment in the video um, to, to get the answer to their question and really get back to work. So how are you uh, enabling these technologies? Is this uh, all technology that's developed in-house? Are you licensing it from external vendors? Uh, how are you uh, put, uh, making the sausage here? Sure. So we're an early adopter of AWS Bedrock. And so what that allows us through through Amazon Bedrock is you can plug in different models all using one set of APIs and one set of developer tooling. Um, and so that way we can change the model we're using depending on the use case, depending on language support, um, rather than tying ourselves to one vendor. The pace of innovation in this market is so fast that we want to have that flexibility um, to apply the latest and greatest tools as new models arrive. Now, you mentioned the idea of a, of a video assistant, and I think that's paired with a, another feature that you've introduced uh, called Smart Search. Uh, give us a little few, few more details on that. Sure, absolutely. So Smart Search, starting with that, and this is available for, for every single VBrick Enterprise video platform, it's combining semantic search and natural language understanding to surface the right video. And so that can be based on metadata, such as the title and description, on the transcript, on the summary that's generated. Um, and then, you know, it can help you get right to the point in the video that you're looking for. Now, you know, beyond having to, to digest or even watch the video um, to see exactly what's being said, um, we have the video assist. In. And what this does is it allows you to ask a question about content from any video in your library, not just meeting recordings, right? So that way, if you have a question about what are the main features of this, how do how does security policy apply to this particular topic, you can ask that question, get the answer you need, um, and and hopefully resolve your issue right away. Now, I guess that comes in particularly handy when you're integrating with uh, some of your partner vendors. Uh, you have a strong relationship integrating with ServiceNow, for instance. How do some of these capabilities uh, manifest themselves in, in the ServiceNow platform? Absolutely. The ServiceNow integration ties together everything we just talked about. It, it allows you to surface the right video to help a user before they submit a service request, help you deflect some of those support issues. It can also help support agents to be able to access video summaries and our video assistant to resolve issues more quickly. Um, so really exciting capability um, that can help for both IT workflows, um, HR workflows, and customer support workflows across the ServiceNow ecosystem. 
Now, when we begin to see that integration, are we foreshadowing anything in terms of what we expect uh, for the role of, of video in the enterprise moving forward? We've always been thinking about video as a tool for collaboration, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm sensing a little something more is at work uh, with the, the types of capabilities VBrick is bringing into play now. Absolutely. It foreshadows everything you should expect to see from VBrick moving forward. So it used to be that companies would view video as too hard to introspect, too hard to maintain compliance on. But in the last few years, everybody's using video for communications, for meetings, for help documentation. Um, and so it's become as valuable as documents for knowledge sharing. And so you're going to see us continue to double and triple down on video AI, generative AI, move into multimodal models um, to really help customers get the most possible value from their video content. And really, that puts VBrick in the, in the catbird seat in a way. Uh, you have two decades of understanding what enterprise uh, customers are looking for from their video. And I guess that really helps when you're starting to figure out what aspects of AI uh, you want to put into place. It does. And companies that don't have a strategy for applying that knowledge and curating video for business value and to mitigate business risk, they're going to fall behind. So if you don't have a good sense of how you can best leverage video, we can certainly help as we've worked some, with some really best in class customers to get the most value from, from their video content. So it's a big vision. What do you think companies should be doing today to position themselves to capitalize on this on this change? Yeah, so there are two sides to this that we've seen customers um, work with and wrestle with, right? And so we have a good playbook here. Um, one is how do you understand that content and surface it to the right user at the right time? Um, and the other side of that is how do you maintain compliance and an understanding of your content um, to be able to sh be sure that it's not going to be a, a, a risk to your organization? Um, and so you really need to be thinking about how do you build out this knowledge repository? What are your, um, your rules around when that content is kept? When it's retired, um, how to keep it up to date. Um, and so, you know, these are areas that I, I, I think we've seen um, a lot of customers, you know, um, run to, um, and some customers are, you know, a little bit slower to adopt, but it's coming either way. Yeah, so look out on the horizon for me a little bit. Uh, what is the future for some of these uh, proprietary AI models that organizations might be uh, developing for internal use? Uh, in, in what role do you see video archives playing in helping populate those data sets? Sure. So, uh, you know, with AI, generative AI is the same. The, the, the models are only as good as the data behind them. Um, proprietary models can often be pretty good if you have enough data for them, right? But then how do you infuse the, the, the knowledge coming from your video content? Um, and how do you make sure that it's use case specific? Um, now, for us, we think there's a really strong place for use case specific video AI, use case specific generative AI tightly integrated with the right user experience to be able to, to, to really help you get the most out of that video content. Well, you're certainly preaching to my uh, intelligent video choir there, Dave. Uh, so I really appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, uh, thanks for stopping by and sharing your insight on the, on the uh, evolving intelligent video marketplace. Thanks to you as always, Steve. And we thank you for taking the time to watch today's episode. And uh, if you want access to more insight from industry thought leaders like Dave Jays, just subscribe to the Intelligent Video Today channel on YouTube at the link right down there below. For Intelligent Research and Intelligent Video Today, I'm Steve Onderhaar. Thanks for your time.